Hi everyone. In this video, we'll be talking about one of the most fascinating epics in history. Alexander the Great. He was born in the dazzling city of Pella, Macedonia in 356 BC. His father, King Philip II, was a powerful ruler who dreamed of unifying Greece. Alexander's mother, Olympias, was the sister of the king of Epirus who believed that Alexander was descended from the gods. From a young age, Alexander learned the art of war, and under the guidance of the famous philosopher Aristotle, he delved into the depths of his thoughts. He always carried a copy of Homer's epic, the Iliad, and likened himself to the hero Achilles. Following in his father's footsteps, Alexander entered the battlefield and declared his heroism with his first victory against the Medes at the age of 16. Later, in 338 BC, he demonstrated his superior abilities by helping his father in the Battle of Chaeronea against Athens and Thebes. However, in 336 BC, Alexander's father, King Philip II, was assassinated and the young commander ascended to the Macedonian throne at the age of only 20. To fulfill his father's dreams, Alexander took action and launched a major campaign against the Persian Empire. He crossed into Anatolia with an army of 40,000 soldiers and 5,000 cavalry and defeated the Persian army at the Battle of Granicus. He continued his conquest of Anatolia and defeated the Persian king Darius III at the Battle of Issus in 333 BC. Alexander's conquests went beyond boundaries and were etched in golden letters on the pages of history. He marched towards victory throughout Syria, Palestine, Egypt, and Mesopotamia. In Egypt, he established the city of Alexandria, which was named after him and strengthened his rule in the Nile Delta. In Mesopotamia, at the heart-wrenching Battle of Gagamila, he completely routed the Persian army and opened the gates of Babylon. While pursuing Darius III, he found his corpse and declared himself the Emperor of Persia. Embracing Persian culture, Alexander allowed his soldiers to marry Persian women. He married three Persian princesses named Roxana, Statira, and Parasitis. However, this new cultural interaction caused tension among Greek soldiers. Alexander was a hero who marked the beginning of an era in world history. As he advanced towards India, he not only conquered its lands, but also carried his culture with him. The light of Greek thought shone with Alexander's armies in the vast lands of India. The brilliance of the Hellenistic Age shone even brighter where these cultures met. In these lands, the greatest scientific, philosophical, and artistic works of the ancient world were born. The shelves of the Library of Alexandria held hundreds of thousands of books, making it a paradise for scientists of the time. Significant works were produced in many fields, including mathematics, astronomy, geography, and philosophy. Works such as Euclid's Elements, Archimedes' Inventions, and Eratosthenes' Calculation of the Circumference of the Earth carry the rich legacy of Alexander's era to this day. Additionally, the Stoic and Epicurean schools of philosophy were born during this period and changed the course of history. The lands conquered by Alexander became not only a political triumph, but also a cultural melting pot. In this cultural interaction, Greek art, science, philosophy, and religion combined with elements of Persian, Egyptian, Indian, and other cultures, leaving an indelible mark on the pages of history. Alexander, who was a hero heralding the beginning of an era in world history, is portrayed as a figure with both heroic and flawed traits in the works of Arian and Quintus Curtius Rufus. In Arian's Anabasis, Alexander's resemblance to Homer's epic heroes is emphasized. He is believed to be a not ordinary person and claimed to be descended from the gods. It is also mentioned that Alexander initiated the Hellenistic era by spreading Greek culture, language, and thought in the territories he conquered. Quintus Curtius Rufus, in his work Historiae Alexandri Magni, which tells the story of Alexander's life, shows that he was both virtuous and flawed. While admired for his military tactics, he is criticized for some of his human weaknesses. Nevertheless, despite all these criticisms, Alexander's achievements continue to be among the greatest victories in human history. After reaching the highest point of his empire, Alexander the Great died at the age of 32. 
While there are different theories about his death, it is generally accepted in ancient sources that he died of malaria or poisoning. His death created uncertainty for the future of the empire and consequently led to the partition of the empire among the commanders called Dianakoi. This partition resulted in the establishment of the Hellenistic kingdoms and the division of the territories conquered by Alexander among different kingdoms. The Hellenistic kingdoms brought about one of the most colorful and rich periods in history. The constant wars between these kingdoms were a precursor to a cultural synthesis and a great struggle. Rising and falling kingdoms, successes and defeats, power struggles and intrigues were filled with fascinating stories. However, the flow of time caused these great empires to be swallowed up and disappear into the dusty pages of history. Today, Alexander the Great and the Hellenistic period are remembered as one of history's greatest legacies. Alexander's military strategies and tactics became a turning point in military history, inspiring future generations. Additionally, Alexander's legend and his divine identity continue to exist as one of the most fascinating subjects of mythology and literature. Thanks for watching, and we hope you enjoyed this video. As always, remember that our learning journey is never ending, and we'll continue to explore new knowledge together. Until next time.